on this Thursday. I'm fully caffeinated, so that's good news. Um, I have a very minor piece of good news for everybody here. Uh, I am getting glasses later this afternoon. Woo! <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. Um, and uh, yeah, basically today we're going to kind of continue along with Premiere um, and then um, we're going to uh, just uh, have, a, there's a video to watch. Um, but one thing that I was thinking was definitely, and I can do kind of an informal poll, um, how many of you would like to spend class time watching a video that you could watch online? Okay, that's option one, is watch a video you can watch online. Option two is have me show you more stuff in Premiere. Okay, option one. Okay, option two. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go with a hybrid model where uh, basically I'm gonna do some stuff and then as we have time, I'll show the video and if we don't finish it, you can catch up with it online. How about that? Awesome. So basically, like we're just sort of um, leaving off here. I wanna make sure I'm recording, yes, good, good. Okay, uh, check, check. Um, so uh, yeah, we're here in week six Thursday. Um, just to remind you, uh, we do have a midterm coming up uh, next week, and I will be posting um, some sort of video review um, in this slot for week seven Tuesday. Um, it might be uh, likely that that is just going to be the last few minutes of our, our class, um, but uh, either way, I'll either make a standalone video or I'll post it as part of the class video. Um, if I do po post it as part of the class video, I'll just put a thing that it's class plus midterm guide. Um, so it should be easy to find. Um, and then again, there's this uh, text-based uh, sort of laundry list of, of what might be on the midterm. Um, and then uh, we'll be wrapping up the Remix video project uh, right around, it looks like, exactly on Halloween. Um, and then after that, we're going to be moving into 3D um, and the, the so-called Rhino section. Um, so we're going to be switching gears uh, yet again to another tool. Um, if you are thinking about getting a jump start in Rhino, uh, now might be a, a good time to think about downloading it and installing it. Just, you know, crack it open, see what happens. No expectations there, but um, definitely with installing software, it's usually better to get that done sooner rather than later, just in case there are any problems. Um, so does anyone have any uh, kind of like questions or news and updates or anything? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so the midterm is next week. It's on October 20th. Actually, now might be a good time to mention, a couple of people have asked about the format of the midterm, um, and I have that posted on the course website, but it's you know, probably buried under something, not, not intentionally, you know, it's just there's a lot of information up there. So um, the, it's basically a 20 question uh, Canvas quiz with different question answer formats. Um, it allows you to take the quiz for the uh, the, you can use the entire 24-hour period, which would be, uh, in this case, um, it would be the evening of uh, October 20th. It will open up, and then uh, all day October 21st, you have until the uh, midnight of the 21st. Um, so, yeah, it's open book, open note. I think that I... One thing that I will tell you that I definitely make a point to do is I make a point to go over the questions um, before I give them to you and make sure that I've covered them in some way in lecture. Um, and so if there is a question that totally just like, whoosh, you know, you have like no recollection of whatsoever, um, don't, don't sort of hesitate to like send me an email and say, are, are you sure? <laughs> Did you really do that? Um, and uh, yeah, I will um, try to you know, work, work with you as best I can. Um, if anybody can't, um, you know, for various uh, reasons related to accommodations or family emergencies, if anyone does need to take the exam on a different day, um, all you would need to do in that case is email me and I will open it up for you at a time 
that works. And you still get the 24 hours. So <laughs> any other questions about the, the midterm? Oh, and a maybe last question, uh, which I said just a couple minutes ago. Um, I am uh, going to be doing a review in this sort of Tuesday slot. There will be either a person-to-person -person review here, or if we don't have time for that, I'll post a standalone 15-minute video where I go over it, the exam. OK. So um, <laughs> oh, East Coast time, I love you. I always get calls from people uh, you know, an hour ahead or an hour behind. Um, so let's see. Um, Today, we are going to be up here. And um, I, will I will spend most of the class time today in Premiere. Um, there is this video called Everything is a Remix. Um, it's also linked here. Um, that uh, we will probably start watching during class today, but we will probably not have time to finish it. And that video is on the midterm exam. There are a couple of questions about it. So um, if we don't have time to finish it in class today, you can just watch it anytime. It's like a 20 to 40 minute video, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into Premiere. So last um, class period, we had kind of gotten into Premiere. Um, and I'm just going to bring up my little laundry list here of stuff. There it is. Good. Um, I'm just gonna uh, drop into the Finder for a second and uh, kind of show us where our project went. Um, and it looks like our video is in this My Video Project, and the folder looks a little bit chaotic right now, um, but that's probably just because of the way that it's being viewed. Um, it looks like we really have a couple of things in our folder that are, well, everything's important, but things that are more important than others. There's a, pr a premier project which we created um, last class, there is uh, a, some sort of obligatory autosave folders that Adobe generates. And then there's all of the assets that we, um, that we imported into the project. So all of those assets are sort of just living here in the folder. Um, one thing that I have written down on my list to show you today um, is the uh, idea of actually kind of packaging your project to move to work on another computer. So that's probably the last thing that I want to show you today is how to take this folder, and we're going to make what's called a zip archive. Um, and that's really kind of awesome because it takes the entire folder and scooshes it into one file that you can just drag and drop onto you know, your network storage. So it kind of simplifies any kind of network you know, moving stuff around uh, if you're moving from your laptop to a lab computer or vice versa. Um, so. If we jump into Premiere um, and I open the project, you may have noticed that little yellow screen there. Um, definitely don't panic. That's like a, uh, just a loading screen in, um, in Premiere. So when Premiere starts, uh, especially because we have quite a few assets in our asset folder or our project browser, um, it's going to take a couple seconds for those assets to load. So don't freak out if when you start up your project, things are yellow or red. Um, it just means that it's loading. So we also, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, sound off from YouTube, because we're done with you, for sure, little happy computer man. Um, and when we get in here, I'm just going to kind of show you some of the things that we did last class. We really didn't do a lot. We dragged uh, a, something from here into the uh, timeline, and then we started uh, doing a little bit on this second track and also sort of thinking about different ways of um, cutting it and pasting it and, in general, just kind of moving it around on the timeline. And then we also made uh, one fade with the pen tool, which we'll definitely go over that in class today. Um, so you can see, um, if you're using this device on your own laptop, um, because of uh, the issues that I'm hoping to get resolved today, I have the screen resolution set fairly large. Um, so you might notice that your windows look a little bit different. You probably have a lot more real estate for the um, actual source program browser here and the source browser. Um, that's just because I have my settings tweaked a little bit so that I can see. 
So um, <laughs> anyway, uh, just wanted to mention that. So um, basically, sprinkles.mov is the clip that we've been working with up to this point. And I have a couple of things that I want to make sure that I show you today. Um, so today, I want to finish up some things related to actually editing video. And then uh, next class, we're going to work almost entirely on sound. And we're also going to work on sort of finishing up the video and exporting it into a format that you could put on various streaming sites like YouTube or Vimeo or TikTok, whatever. Um, it's all the same <laughs> from a technological perspective. Um, so one thing that we can do with this little sprinkles clip, and this is just a small clip that I took out of the sprinkles, um, I want to show you a couple ways of doing clip adjustments. And so we have a short clip here. It looks like um, it's about uh, 15 seconds, 20 seconds maybe. I'm just going to play through the clip so you can see what's happening. And maybe there are some moments that we want to capitalize on. Mm, spoon. That could be good. <laughs> maybe. Dumping. Also good. Um, so basically, I'm just kind of like looking for bits to kind of um, bump out at me. Some of these machine processes might look really cool if they're repeated. Um, one thing that I'm thinking about doing is creating kind of a repeated situation here. Oh, I do love the sort of like sprinkle dribble too. That's pretty sweet. Um, so I think actually what I'm going to do is I am going to sample this sort of like sprinkle, sprinkle dribble. And um, the first thing I need to do, if I want to address this bit, this tiny little bit here, probably the best thing to do would be to cut it out of this larger clip. So I would zoom into my timeline. Um, and that allows me to just get a much more finer grain of a, uh, adjustment in the timeline. So I can actually, if you zoom in far enough, um, you can actually do frame by frame editing, which just to be clear, almost nobody does. But when you do need something at just the right moment, it can be really helpful to go from frame to the next frame, right? And you just cut into the edit that was already there. Um, so I'm going to use my razor tool, which is over here. And with the razor tool, I'm just going to cut the beginning of this clip. And then I'm also going to scrub down to the end of this sort of dribbling sequence. And um, is it important that I get it exactly right? Not really. There's sprinkles. Nobody's going to notice um, if it's you know, 10 seconds or 10.2 seconds. Um, I'm just kind of trying to demonstrate you know, how you would get something right on if you, if you wanted to. So now I have this little clip that I can play with. And if I go to the selection tool, which by the way, I think we mentioned last class that the selection tool is sort of a great default option. Like if you're not sure what tool you should be using, the answer is almost always the selection tool. Um, so I'm going to grab that, and then I can grab this little clip that we cut out, and I'm just going to move it to the end of the timeline. Um, sometimes I choose to, like if I'm working on kind of a maybe a tight sequence with a lot of detail, um, I would potentially choose to move my clip to the end of the timeline and then drag it all back to where it needs to go in the timeline later just so that when you're at the end of the timeline, you can cut and paste, and you know, things can just kind of continue on infinitely, and you don't have that problem of bumping into the next clip in your timeline. So that's just kind of a strategy that I know works for a lot of people. Um, so with this clip, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste it. And as I pointed out last class, the copy and paste is uh, sort of magnetized to the playhead, not the clip. So uh, I actually want the playhead to bump up just at the end of this clip and then paste it. Um, so that's something that gets me pretty much every time. Um, but it's just one of the quirks of dealing with Premiere. Um, so now I have two identical clips side by side. OK, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this clip go backwards so that the clips will loop seamlessly. So basically, I'm just going to create like a seamless loop out of this very short piece of, of footage. So here, if I control click this uh, piece, and then I go over to 
dun, 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 on this long list, by the way, that comes up if you right click anything in Premiere, um, this long list has a speed duration um, function. And in that speed duration function, you can reverse the speed. Um, if we were to go in again, which we will do, let me just show you real quickly. This one has been hopefully backwards. Yep. So that's that. So I do want you to just notice a couple of things. One is that this little FX um, square right here has, is sort of grayed out. That means that it's just a regular clip and that nothing has been done to it. It doesn't have any effects. It doesn't have any you know, speed adjustments or anything like that. It's basically raw video. When you start to see that the FX thing is shaded in yellow, that's just a notation that the clip has stuff. So if we were to double click this clip and go to effect controls, um, and we'll do this again during class, but you could start to see, depending on the effect that you're using, you could start to see some adjustment markers here and different techniques that you can use to sort of tweak the effects that are put on a given clip. So we'll come back to that later. Right now, we're sort of just working through these little pieces. And I can select both of them, and I think I'm gonna select both of them, copy and paste them. And I'm gonna definitely get on the right spot here before I do that. And um, it looks like I might not have had both of them selected, so I'm just gonna do that really quickly. Here we go. So now, um, you know, if you watch them, it's pretty straightforward. It's just back and forth and back and forth. Um, what I would do maybe additionally here is I would seriously consider putting another speed adjustment on this. So in other words, making this a little faster. So if we go to this pair of clips and adjust speed duration, you can see here where it says reverse speed, it's kind of got this little minus symbol. That's because it actually doesn't know if these are backwards or forwards. And of course, the answer is they're both. One is backwards, one is forwards. So um, it's not going to give you like a super reliable preview on that. But what we can do is we can take both clips and make them quite a bit faster. So I'm going to make them 300% faster. And you still have to kind of like juice them together. Juice, by the way, is a word that I learned from my great-grandmother, but did you know that Jonathan Van Ness also loves that word? So it's okay now. I can use it again. Um, so juice means to shove things together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, yeah, so now we have this sort of regular speed clip, and then it's just going to kind of do, do, do. And, you know, we can definitely, like, sort of spiral it into speed in infinite if we wanted to. Um, we can go ahead and just take another, take another um, sample here from the end and then have it go back and then maybe make these even faster um, and then basically just go in the other direction. So let me quickly just add another thing here. So let's make these maybe 500% faster. Um, and then of course we have to just take care of the empty space here. Um, and yeah, so now we should be good to go. Take the regular speed one. So there's like a whole art to doing basically what I just did in a really kind of campy and um, exaggerated way, right? Like where you take a small movement that somebody's doing um, I'm thinking about like political remix videos is really where you see a lot of it. Like somebody who maybe says the wrong thing and then in a video they say it like a million, a million, a million, a million, a million times. You know, it's, it's a thing. Um, so it's definitely like a thing that you can do using some basic tools in Premiere. Um, let's take a, a really quick look at uh, transitions and then I also want to take a quick look at effects um, before we kind of run out of time for the day. So um, 
you can see here in our timeline right now, it looks like our clips are not really touching, which means that we have these areas of silence. Um, it's basically video silence. Um, which we pointed out in the last class, video silence is black um, by nature. Um, if you wanted it to be something else, you could certainly put a track underneath this and have it be whatever you want. Um, totally, wor totally worthwhile. Um, you could even make it a still image if you wanted to in the background. Um, but uh, for the most part, um, in video, those sort of like long pauses are not something that you would typically see in a professionally edited video, right? Like most professionally edited, vi edited video, I definitely don't have to show you because I'm just 100% certain that we all probably have multiple hours of screen time a day. Um, so in a professionally edited video, they tend to be edited very quickly where things are just constantly cutting from one thing to another. And that's a particular style of editing, right, that is really just kind of popular in TV and movies today. It's not the only way to edit video. Um, it's edited based in a sort of tradition that is based on entertaining people. So it's made to literally not look boring. Um, so something to think about is how quickly do you want your video to kind of percolate or not? Do you want it to kind of like metaphorically like smack people in the face with its action? Or do you want your video to kind of like slowly blossom into like some kind of slow transformation? In art video, all of those choices are legitimate and totally wonderful. <laughs> so um, I'm not definitely expecting anybody to kind of like look for that sort of standard of like a Hollywood video or Hollywood movie. Um, but what I am going to do in this clip right now is I'm just going to move the clips a little bit closer together so that we can make what's called uh, transitions. And you may see that this is the third or fourth time that I've accidentally used the ripple edit tool. That's something that you'll just have to kind of watch out for. It's a, a tad bit annoying. Um, so it's, in other words, I'm kind of hovering over these clips to move them, and I'm just accidentally grabbing the, uh, it transforms into the ripple edit tool here. So I could basically, like, it is changing the in and outs of the clips. Um, and it's, you know, not actually what I want. So I just want to make sure that when I'm sliding these clips around that I'm actually using the the selection tool and not necessarily the ripple edit tool. So I'm just gonna scrub through here real quickly and make sure that we know what's up. Okay, yes, we do know pretty much what's up. Um, and now I can take any two clips that are on the same track, that looks like these clips right here, um, and we can add a transition. So I think probably I'm gonna add these transitions are, these might not be the best areas for transitions because they're sort of seamless visually, right? There's not really a whole lot happening from here to here, um, except maybe a small gap. So if I take care of that gap um, and just play this. So this is not a great place for a transition, even though there's a cut. Um, the cut is really just kind of allowing the viewer to see the video through. So if I scroll back to an area where maybe we have a more drastic change, like right here, it's going from one mode of the video to another totally separate thing, right? That's a great place for a transition. And the good news is transitions in Premiere are pretty easy. So we're going to unpack a different kind of like level of the app, and that is the uh, effects section. So. Um, if you go over here to the side, uh, side button, you can bring up the effects palette. And then in this case, we're just gonna be looking at, um, there's just a bunch of folders of effects and we're gonna be looking at the video effects. Um, and I think, you know, these are all fine effects, like you can explore them uh, at your leisure. Um, a lot of them, and you'll probably notice a couple of things are happening today that have extreme affinities with uh, Photoshop, um, and that's not your imagination. Um, these software companies are, it's made by the same company, so they use a lot of Photoshop functionality in Premiere. So if you're thinking that, it's, it's not just you. Um, I'm gonna go over to the Distort tab and just use this, um, Turbulent Displace, this is kind of a fun, a fun one. Um, and basically you just drag it onto the clip that you want to apply it to. 
Now, a couple of things have happened. You've noticed that our clip now, instead of being yellow, has become red. And basically what that means is that it has not rendered the preview of the effect. So is that a problem? Well, let's see. I can now put this on and play it in the preview window, and it works just fine. Um, why would I need to render it kind of at full resolution? Um, if, number one, if that's how you want to watch it while you're making it, then you should render it at full resolution. Number two, uh, you may be exporting your video uh, for other people to watch, in which case it would have to be rendered, and that's kind of part of the export process. So, um, so in this case, I'm going to show you how to render it just because uh, we can, um, even though it's not maybe absolutely necessary. So in order to render, usually what I do, um, and this is because I tend to work on smaller videos, like I'm not working on a hour-long documentary. I usually work on shorter format um, art videos. So for a shorter format video, you can just render the entire video. And so if you just click this um, render, uh, render in to out, that will actually render everything. If you click the render effects into out, it will only render the effects. So I usually just do render into, into out because it renders the entire video and then I don't have to worry about it again. Um, and as you can see, it might take a second. Um, is it going to take possibly 16 uh, minutes? I can almost guarantee you that it will not take that long. Um, if it does take that long, we can just stop it. Um, so, yeah, definitely when you render, it is something to sort of, like, think about um, whether you really want to do it or not. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because... Um, it's probably taking an extra long time because I haven't rendered anything um, up to this point. But um, let me go ahead and just do the render effects, and that should be a little more economical. Much. Perfect. So, so if we go to our sort of like sprinkly part here, I guess the whole thing is a sprinkly part. So here's the effect in question. Um, and you can see that now the bar above it is reading as green. That, that means that it's fully rendered. Um, how can I break that again? Oh, let me show you. Uh, if you want to break it again, let's do uh, something to kind of maybe Let's just pretend that I have no idea what I'm doing and I just put this filter on, or an effect filter on this video and I rendered it and then I decided like, wow, it needs so much more cowbell or zing or a special sauce or whatever um, and I want to kind of just change it up, um, change up the effect. So if I wanted to do that, I could double click the clip and then go into the effects controls tab and if you scroll through, you'll see there's an entry for the effect that I am using. So every effect that you have applied to a video clip in Premiere will list in this sort of window. And that includes stuff that you might not even consider effect, like where is it on the screen, is it opaque or not, stuff like that. Those are kind of standard um, effects. And then we have the sort of special effects that we've added, like the turbulent displace. So, so let's just say, for sake of um, argument, that I have this. It looks like this uh, amount of turbulent displace is set at 50% now. So I'm going to set it up at 200, just to kind of like more, more crazy. So, um, so yeah, now it's definitely like in some full, full-blown crazy state, um, and it's definitely, you know, uh, changed. Now you will also notice that this has gone back to red. That's because the changes that we made have not been rendered yet. So we'd have to go back up to rendering, uh, render effects into out. And it'll do that pretty quickly. So in a nutshell, that's basically how to do effects. Um, there's a really tight relationship in Premiere between effects and transitions. And so if I just scroll back to the part of the 
video that I'm actually interested in right now, which is back here. Um, a couple of things you might notice. So this has been rendered. That's great. Um, let's say I want to put a transition between this area and then this area when it starts to sort of like spin around in the pot. Um, because this is rendered, I will be able to do a video transition. And, um, you know, we could spend like an entire semester talking about video effects and video transitions. Like there's just hundreds and thousands of them. And they all have kind of different looks and different ways of being read by the viewer. Um, probably the most basic kind of um, multi-purpose transition in video making is going to be the fade to black. Um, and that's just because the sort of standard environment is with black in the background. So if you look at, you know, just video film as an aggregate, that sort of fade to black is pretty standard. Um, let me go ahead and show you how to do it. So if I go in here to video transitions and then dissolve, um, there is a dip to black filter. And um, you need to kind of place that transition between two clips on the same track. And now we have, uh, again, we need to render it, but we have a dip to black here. So if we wanted to change this transition, we could uh, just double click it. And we can set the transition duration. Um, again, just maybe like a rule of thumb, I think that a quarter second is like a lifetime for a video, a video transition. Um, so I'm going to set it down to like 0, 0, 0, uh, 0,000,020. Uh, and that's just going to make us like a really quick, elegant transition. And the reason that we're doing it that way, this is sort of like your default generic transition. Right? This is your, tra theoretically, and maybe I don't know if I 100% believe this, but this is the transition that is most likely to be viewed as meaningless, right? Or just like how it's done or generic part of the video. If you want to make other uh, transitions, you certainly can. So there are tons and tons of interesting transitions. Um, and definitely, if I grab from the media browser, maybe one of these other videos, just so there's like a huge difference um, between the clips. Um, I'm going to go ahead and also just use my ripple edit tool to kind of cut this in the middle. And doo -doo -doo. OK, lots of stuff happening. Um, I, think, I think I'm also going to take this clip and just move it over here so I can explore a transition between these two things. So um, here, if I wanted to make a transition between that and that, first of all, I'm going to show you the transition point. OK. So um, thinking about other transitions that we could use besides dip to black, which is a great transition. Um, some of these other transitions you might find to be interesting also. So the cross dissolve is sort of a really famous uh, transition. I would say if you're trying to go for an effect that looks like mysterious or arty, God forbid, um, this would be <laughs> a really interesting choice. Um, so what cross dissolve does is it literally blends one clip into the other. So if you look at it quickly, um, it's just going to do that. Um, if you, you can make a cross dissolve, and in this case, because we have two relatively long clips, you can make a cross dissolve that is 10 seconds long if you want. Um, as far as I know, there is no upper limit on how long a transition can be in Premiere. Um, the, usually, the limiting factor is the length of the clip um, that you have to work with. So here, we can do a 10-second a cross-dissolve. Kill those sprinkles with the weirding way. Yeah. So um, 
Yeah, so that's basically like how you would make a longer, sort of more ephemeral transi uh, trans transition. Um, I think, uh, lastly, since we just have a couple of minutes here, there's one thing that I want to sort of, uh, a couple things that I want to loop up. Um, one is that I did want to address sound. So, um, coming from your clips. So some people, uh, some of the clips in the clip browser um, and the clip library that I put up online, some of those clips come with their own audio, uh, like this one right here. Um, and you can see that right now we're basically like completely ignoring the audio tracks that are added into Premiere. But um, here, this one came with, uh, with some stuff. So if I turn this up, there we go. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, so the point here is that if you have attached audio um, with your clip, you can either choose to use that audio and make it part of your project, or you can just get rid of it entirely and overdub new audio, which is basically what I think the project kind of emphasizes, making your own audio. So if we wanted to get rid of this audio clip, uh, the first thing we would need to do is to right click the clip. And then uh, you go through this humongous list. And if you click the unlink option, um, then unlink uh, will basically just make it so that you can delete that separately um, and then get rid of it. So should you, in my personal opinion, like should you delete audio or should you keep it around? Probably there's no harm in keeping it around because once you delete it, it's gone forever. Um, but I would certainly think about, if I just control Z here, I would certainly think about maybe muting, muting the track by clicking the M button. Um, and then that kind of gives you a little more flexibility as to whether you maybe need, need or want to use the audio or not. Um, and you can keep it in your project. There's not really any reason why you shouldn't. It doesn't take up very much space or anything like that. So I'm going to pretend that this project is like some fully realized work of brilliance. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I'm just going to do uh, one quick thing to get it into a form that I can transport. So as I said, I've been working with this folder called My Video. And this folder has pretty much everything in it that I've been using. Probably just for superstitious reasons, it would be a good, good thing to maybe quit Premiere Pro, um, just so your project file is completely let go <laughs> by the operating system. Uh, and then we're going to go into this folder. Um, and I'm going to uh, right click on the My Video folder. And I can click create a compression uh, archive. So I'm just going to compress my video. If you didn't already know how to do this, this technique of creating zip archives is pretty, pretty critical for media production because a lot of times we work with projects that have really complex file structures, and it's not easy to just drag them all onto Google Drive right, and maintain that folder hierarchy or structure. So the zip archive is kind of a really good way of just like packaging it into a thing where you only have to deal with one file. Um, and that's exactly what happens. So in the same uh, video, it basic, or in the same folder, it will basically dump out uh, myvideo.zip. And then that basically becomes you know, the thing that you want to put over to Box or Google Drive or whatever. Um, you also, as part of this, uh, this process, it does actually compress the data slightly. So there's some uh, economy in file size as well, which can be helpful. If you're making a two or three gigabyte project, like with video, it's not, you're not going to see a huge benefit. But the benefit is mostly just the convenience of dealing with one file. Um, we have like two or three minutes left. Does anyone have, as this is processing, does anyone have any questions about video? All right, we're going to, um, on Tuesday, so here's our myvideo.zip. And, and as you can see, it's like 2.57 gigabytes, and this is pretty much the same. Um, it's really just this idea that, you know, you just have this one thing to deal with instead of a folder full of stuff. Um, 
Well, definitely uh, on Tuesday, we're going to deal with sound. Um, so there's uh, a sound library that I already uploaded to the website that kind of rides along with the video clips. Um, and if you get a chance, like kind of browse through it and see if there are any so uh, sounds that kind of, you know, tickle your fancy. Um, and we'll start kind of putting together some sort of a sound collage uh, on Tuesday. And then I'll also on Tuesday cover like how to kind of finish up your project and get it on the internet. Cool. I'll see you all. Don't get caught in the rain. It looks a little iffy out there. Bye, everyone.